Because who doesn't like to play their flute in deep space? That was NASA astronaut Katie Coleman. She's a retired U.S. Air Force Colonel, MIT graduate, now Shelburne Falls, Massachusetts resident. She joins me, Katie. It's a pleasure to meet you. And she's joined by fellow astronaut, U.S. Navy Captain, Needham High graduate, Sonny Williams. I'm thrilled to meet you, but then I re is anyone ever not thrilled to meet you? I mean, obviously the laughter means it. What are you guys doing in Boston? What's happening here, Katie? It's the ISS Research Conference. So basically we have our space station up in space, and we've been doing research up there for a bunch of years and it's paying off but we are here in Boston this week to shout out about the results and recruit new experimenters. Is that why you're here too? Yeah exactly so I'm, I'm Katie and I both of us have flown in space on the space shuttle and the Russian Soyuz and so we're also here to talk about our experience doing that and doing the experiments up on the ISS. I mean, as, as people who actually lived up there and actually did the experiments that's why it helps to have us at the conference to tell these folks what's good to do what's not good to do what's hard when you're home, just living your life, and you look up at the sky like we all do, what do you see different from what I do? And I don't mean an individual star. What, what do you think when you look up there, Sonny? Um, I know my friends are up there. Actually, the office is pretty small, you know, for like NASA astronauts, astronauts as well as our international partners, our Russian cosmonaut friends, our friends from ESA and Japan and Canada. And, and when you look up there, you know that they're up there, they're working hard, but they're also having a lot of fun. How about you? Does your heart start doing something or what? You know, there's there's something. It's like a, a destination. I mean, it's it's like a place that we're going, that we are, and there's even further to go. There's a sort of longing and certainly a certain wistfulness for life on the station. You're the spacewalker, right, in this too, Sam? Mm -hmm. So you leave the, I mean, I, just please, I mean, so you leave this aircraft, you're above Earth, those views are the most powerful things I've ever seen, and you're floating in space. What's in your head the second you leave the craft. What, what are you thinking? Well, I think the first thing you're thinking is I don't want to mess up. <laughs> That's actually <laughs> a very good thing. A lot of people are counting on you, and it's a, it's a pretty expensive uh, piece of equipment Got up it. there, and you want to make sure that it's going to keep working and you're going to continue to do everything. And so you're busily getting to your work site. You put your stuff down, you start working, and then maybe all of a sudden the sun comes up and you see the world zipping below you. Like, ah! And it's, it's just spectacular. And then it really puts you in your place, and you realize that what we're doing, you know, as people from one planet is pretty spectacular. It's pretty amazing. So you're on the space station. Do you say to yourself, oh, I'm just at work today. I'm just, <laughs> I'm essentially doing my, Jim went to work, I went to work. Do you say that or do you, are you constantly conscious? I can't believe what I am doing and where I'm doing it. I would say it's, it's like living the life of Peter Pan and the magic never ends. And, and that same environment makes it a place where, you know, we can't do this kind of research down here on the ground. And I'm just really aware that we're doing things that, that can't be done down here. I want to talk to you about the research in a second, but you, didn't you do the marathon thing too on a treadmill? I mean, She's awesome. I, I, that's I, totally I awesome. <laughs> what was your time? Well, I was uh, uh, 420, something well, that's like that. Yeah. My Is sister did it uh, actually the real day here in Boston. On Earth. And it was rainy and, and not so nice here in Boston yeah, in 2007. And so I was guilt, feeling guilty that I actually had to finish it because I dragged her into it and she was suffering down here. But we both finished like right around the same time. Okay, it's clear from three minutes ago you two are two of the best salespeople. People I've ever met already. But what do you say to the average person who says, listen, this is tight budget times. I admire what these women and their colleagues do. I love the concept of outer space. We just can't afford things like this in 2015 until we take care of X and Y. What do you say to those people? Well, we're doing it faster, better, smarter. Um, and, and trying to be fiscally conservative with what we're doing. Part of that is commercial crew. You know, we just uh, recruited Boeing and SpaceX mm. to make two spacecraft that will go up to the International Space Station so we can leverage that with our Russian partners. And that will allow NASA to focus its money on exploration and the, the next vehicle, Orion. So I think we're doing the right thing and trying to do it the right way as well as making a better spacecraft. Okay, so in addition to what you say to that adult, what do you say to the kid who's watching tonight who says, I want to be her, I want to be her, whether it's a little boy or a little girl. What, what, what's your message to them? Well, actually, the, the message might be different, you know, in, in terms of boys and girls. I think that girls like to be part of a solution. And, well, seriously, <laughs> and, and, that, and that's what we're, we're really about, is we may be doing that research up on this platform in space, but it actually comes right back down here to Earth. Um, the osteoporosis research alone, it, to me, it's significant being a woman. We lose bone about 10 times faster than a woman mm -hmm. who's 70 who has osteoporosis. So what she loses in a year, we lose in a month if we don't do something. And because it happens so fast, we can study it. So those kinds of experiments are happening up there. I, I like to tell the kids about that kind of stuff and also just to tell them, 
real people do these things. And they may not grow up to be astronauts, but hopefully they'll be inspired to stay learning the stuff they need. Do you believe how amazing it is you have the both the same outfit? Is that amazing? <laughs> Katie Coleman, it is a real pleasure. Sunny Williams, pleasure so much, as well. Jim. Congratulations and good luck with all your work. Thank really. you.